Hollywood Spotlight, presenting an all-star review from the entertainment center of the world, Hollywood. Hello out there, this is Tom Jeffrey, and it certainly is great to be back with you again with another sparkling array of talent. Larry Burke, the troubadour of Hollywood, the five Jones boys, that master of modern orchestral music, Phil Harris, and of course, our usual guest, whom we're always tickled to see and hear, Bob Byrne. Oh, it surely looks as though it's going to be a great day and blue skies are overhead. Well, <laughs> what do you know about that? That's exactly what Larry Burke is going to sing about, blue skies. Now here's our genial maestro with another of his grand arrangements for his orchestra and featuring his own mellow baritone voice, Phil Harris singing Lazy River. <laughs> Thank you. 
that lazy, lazy river in the noonday sun. Linger in the shade of a kind old tree. Throw away your troubles, dream a dream with me. Of a lazy river where the robin song awakes a bright new morning, we can loaf along. Blue skies up above, everyone's in love. It's up a lazy river, how happy you can be. Up a lazy river with me. Up a lazy river by the old mill run. That lazy, lazy river in the noonday sun. Linger in the shade of a kind old tree. Throw away your troubles, dream a dream with me. Of a lazy river where the robin song awakes a bright new morning, we can loaf along. Blue skies up above, everyone's in love. It's up a lazy river, how happy you can be. Up a lazy river with me. Thanks, Phil. That was really swell. Yeah. Well, your friend Don Wilson is here again, folks. And with him, well, I'm going to let Don tell you himself. Don Wilson. Well, here's Bob Burns from Arkansas. Bob started out as a biscuit salesman, but he failed. He ate the samples. <laughs> Bob Burns, I wish you'd come up here and tell us what you know about traveling salesmen. You know, Don, I don't know so much about traveling salesmen. That is uh, anything I can tell here. But... Uh, <laughs> The, the greatest piece of salesmanship I ever saw in my life, Don, is uh, when I got myself hired on this program. Oh. You know, and, uh, you know, Don, uh, if I don't make good on this program, there's only one more left that I can get on. Well, tell us, Bob, what program is that? That's that reforestation program. Oh. <laughs> well, why were you so anxious to get on this program, Bob? Well, Don, the main reason is uh, because I just glory in human misery. You know, uh, all my folks are that way. It, it all dates back to my great-great-grandfather over in Scotland. It seems that he was throwing nickels out the window one day to some poor children, and the string broke. <laughs> and uh, and uh, ever since then, uh, he was bitter. That made him very bitter towards the world, and his bitterness has been handed down throughout all the generations. And I don't have one single relative who doesn't have some mean streak. Now, some of them like to pull up young corn. And uh, there's a, there's a, I've got an old, uh, an old aunt who uh, goes out and locks the hen house door every time it starts clouding up so the little chickens can't get in out of the rain. And uh, I had two uncles that used to make dates with old maids and then not show up. <laughs> Oh, Bob, Bob, I think you're making good on this program, all right. Well, Don, if I make good, I suppose my folks will be out here from Arkansas to sponge on me. My, uh, my wife's relatives are already out here. You know, uh, it isn't that I mind my wife's relatives coming out here to visit us, but sitting across the table from my mother-in-law's face three times a day, it's not any too good for the digestion. And, uh... She, I told my uh, father-in-law the other day, I says, you know, your wife is not the prettiest woman in the world. He says, I think she's the ugliest thing I ever saw. <laughs> and I says, well, why is it you take her with you everywhere you go? And he says, I'd rather take her with me than kiss her goodbye. <laughs> <laughs> you know, uh, Don, I haven't, I haven't been doing so well financially lately. And the other day I told my mother-in-law that... Uh, I wish she'd kind of get out and get something to do to help set the table. And she said she'd be tickled to death to work if she could find something to do. So I took her out to a farmer that I know out here in the country and asked him if he could give her a job as a scarecrow. <laughs> and uh, the farmer says, well, I'll have to give her an audition, see? <laughs> so, uh... So the farmer told her to go out there in the cornfield and just stand there and see what happens. And she went out in the cornfield, stood there about 10 minutes, and those crows got so scared they brought back corn they stole four years ago. <laughs> <Thank you. laughs> Poor old mothers-in-law, they certainly take a beating. Well now, 
The five Jones boys tell us in song and rhythm of a bit of gossip they recently heard. Bring forth the guitar boys, loosen up the old vocal cords. We're all ears. <laughs> What you hear? Yes, I heard. You ain't heard nothing. Well, it wasn't told me I only heard. Swing boy. I heard. Not me. Yes, I heard. Not, not, not it. Well, it wasn't told me I only heard. Now what she said? He said that she said that she didn't know where she got uh -huh. it. He said that she said that she always had to stop it. I heard. Not me. Yes, I heard. Not me. Well, it wasn't told me I only heard. I heard all about it. Well, it wasn't told me I only heard. I was doing a little keto people, you know, yeah, man. Well, it wasn't told to me, I only heard. Now, he said that she said that didn't know where she got it. He said that she said... Lord, would have to stop it, I guess. I heard all about it. Well, it wasn't told to me, I only heard. Oh, we heard. Yes, we heard. Well, it wasn't told to us, we only heard. She said. She said that she said that she didn't know what she got. And if it ever got out again, boy, it's gonna be a tough ride. Oh, we heard. Yes, we heard. Well, it wasn't first of us. We only heard. Swing boy. What you heard, boy?